Okay, welcome to the Lobo Then Podcast. On this episode, we have J.P. McAllister. Now, J.P.'s an actor now, but uh, he didn't start that way. He actually grew up in a dairy farm in Indiana, right? Yeah, he was raised by Mennonites. Uh, yeah, he actually used to get meth from this Amish DJ that he would sell when he was 14 years old. Yeah, J.P. was adopted by Mennonites. I think he was put into foster care when he was about three. Yeah, his uh, biological mom in and out of prison. Uh, biological with dad in and out of prison. I think he's still, he's not sure, but he still might be in prison, you know, member of the Aryan Nation. But anyways, JP, I yeah, grew up in Indiana, started getting into trouble around 14. Actually, at 16 years old, got hit with some gun charges, charged as an adult. Um, parents were going to send him to this boarding school. He said, nah, ended up going to prison, right? Uh, tells him a story about a guy, kind of a mentor he met in prison. Uh, some stories about actually prison food, a slammy. It's a he gives us a recipe on how to make a slammy. And then we, we talked about you know his parents, his mom, his time in prison, some of the stuff he learned. Uh, got in a little bit in trouble on how he cleaned up his act after he came to Chicago, started doing comedy, started doing acting. So, yeah, so check out the episode. Uh, I think I talk about when I went to jail for my gun thing, and then maybe I attacked my dad for getting deported so he got some films coming up 71 seconds where he plays george zimmerman remember that guy in uh dead man's poker where everybody's being if you play you die so that's all coming out so i'll put some info for that and patrick lazan's foundation he's doing some after school programs with that foundation they got a film fester coming out in february so i'll put all those links up so yeah everybody check out lobo den jp McAllister. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the Lobo Den Podcast. Today we have J.P. McAllister. Uh, what's up, J.P.? Hey, how's it going? Good. Thanks for having me. So, yeah, J.P., he, actor, comedian, I've known, man, you didn't, you, wait, you didn't grow up, you grew up in Indiana, right? I grew up in Indiana, that's right. And, uh, and uh, was it a dairy farm? Is that what Yeah, the, so I was farm? on a dairy farm until I was about 16 years old. So you were working or what? How did? Yeah, I mean, I just lived the life of a farm kid. We didn't have television or anything, so it was like. Every morning, 4.30 a.m., we were up milking cows, doing chores, get ready. Usually like 30 minutes to hurry up and get ready for school, make the bus. The bus so is like wait, an wait. hour ride to school. So you, you got to get up. What time do you have to get up? 4.30 every day. At 4.30. So what time do you go to school? Like from How much work uh, did you have to do from there to before uh, school? It's kind of hazy now, like after all these years. But I just I think that my bus would come around at 7, I believe, and school would start at 8, 8.15. So yeah, the bus came. So we worked until like six thirty, so like two hours, and then I would hurry up and try to take a shower and get ready. And like what kind of what what kind of stuff would you guys do? Uh, I mean, just yeah, milk the cows, and we'd have to feed them and clean pens and whatever needed to be done at the time. You know, just who was it? You and your brothers? Go. How many? How many? How many siblings? Do you just have? me and my brother. Yeah. Okay, so you, you just have one brother. It was you. Yeah, I mean, I have others. I was adopted, so oh, only okay. one brother was with me on the farm. Yeah, on the farm there. And then when you so you were sixteen? We're in Indiana. Uh, down. About 20, 30 minutes south of South Bend, Indiana. South of South Bend? Yeah, Elkhart right. County is where it's at, actually. Oh, okay, so you're, um, <clears throat> did you, what's not, I can't think of the name. Rudy, not Rudy, but yeah. Notre, <laughs> Notre Dame, absolutely. Notre yeah, Dame, yeah, yeah. Never, Did you ever go to the drop? You ever, uh, this is the no, drop? No, no, I've never been there. No. I got, yeah, I don't know. If people, the drop is some comedy club. I, I emailed them. Yeah, I've heard of them, definitely. I've, I emailed them and I never heard anything back, so. I, 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 um, I gotta get the names of the people. Like I have a screenshot. It. I don't know if yeah for act and if people don't know. So, JP, J, you he was doing comedy. How long you doing comedy? Uh, I want to say it's going on nine years, eight nine years maybe. Eight nine years and acting. Did you it's just all, start? Two acting? years, yeah, just about two years now. Yeah, yeah, yeah really, man. Yeah, because I've seen, I've seen. Um, yeah, you've been. How'd you how'd you get into to to acting in the comedy? Uh, it's a it's kind of a weird. I mean. I, I never really thought about being an actor. Um, I did a little bit like in high school for church, like church plays and stuff. Okay. Um, but it just came about as like, I just was wanted something different. I wanted to do something different. I wanted to do something that made money. And I saw that on like Facebook, there was these groups where you could apply to do like extra work and it always paid, you know, it was like a hundred bucks or whatever for the day. And I'm like, I don't know. And then like 
you know, my ex talked me into finally doing it. And it was, like after a year, I finally like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and try it. What was your first, uh, well, it starts with, <clears throat> what is it, that background? Is that the first yeah. thing you did, background stuff? Extra what is it? background work. Is, you just stand there or you got to yeah, move? It's really, yeah, it you, it's really, yeah, it's just, it's uh, the bottom of the totem pole in the world of, you know, television and film. Yeah, it's not really acting. You can't put it on your resume. No one respects it. No one, oh. you, they look at you like you're dirt. Um, you know, but yeah, you, you, you just go in and they'll just say, Hey, stand here. When we say action, walk over here and, you know, and then stop when we say cut, you know, I mean, okay. pretty much they give you something to do. It's all okay. nonverbal and that's it, you know? And what was your first, uh, like acting gig you got for background work? No, like, at, like, oh, real? Sp- was it called speaking? I don't know. Oh, the- speaking role. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So my first one I got was, um, I played a drug dealer that gets shot in the back of the head in a film called, I don't have my resume in front of me. Um, I've done quite a few since That's then. That's fine. I, can't I, uh, I, I could put it yeah, in. Yeah, but yeah, it it's up. like, uh, uh, yeah, so that was it. Like, it was literally like I walked out, met this guy. I walked back to my car, opened the trunk, and the guy gets behind me and blows my brains out. And that was the first first thing. I think my first line was like, you know, something like so typical, like, hey, where's the money? Or you got the money? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. And then you got shot. How'd you, how'd you end up, how'd you get that role? It's like uh, your... On backstage.com. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. You said back backstage oh okay yeah, yeah, yeah i thought you said back page. no no not backstage or back page back door none of that no yeah. I, I well i don't know if you know i don't know if i ever told you like so we met our mic but i used to be a big time john so back page when back page john the guy who sleeps yeah, with yeah. prostitutes big time so back page like i was an expert on back page like i like i know i could tell like oh that's a cop that's not a cop oh, really? like i had friends like who you're a professional like yeah i was yeah. a professional john for a while dude and i look i was in florida one time and then I was wasted on, on drugs and alcohol. And it was like 2 and 3 in the morning. I hit like 14. All these girls I met, everybody went through everything. And then I was at back. I was calling all these ads on back page. Yeah. I called like 14 or something. Like it was late. Nobody's picking. <laughs> like you really wanted to. <laughs> two of them. Yeah, dude. Drugs, drugs and alcohol. I hear you. And then two of them went, uh, or one of them went straight to a police station. One of them was a Really? Yeah. It, it was at that point. Nobody was even manning that line. So uh, you called and it was like, welcome to the Hollywood police station, Jesus. which is by four. by um, Hollywood, Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Before Florida. Mm-hmm. So back backstage that's just like where you put up your, your resume yeah, yeah so it's kind of the start for any actor that wants to to do it seriously speaking roles and they what they do is they post all of their television and film and theater stuff to uh nationwide worldwide really if you want you can um and and it's usually like the independent like the lower level entry level type stuff student films independent films oh, okay, um, okay. and it's like 20 bucks a month and you build a profile with your headshot resume actors reel all that stuff uh-huh. um and it's just where you start in the in, in the business pretty and, much. and then and how'd you how'd you get into to stand up when did you start doing stand up what got you into that uh stand up came about because like you said earlier, with you, with, you had problems with drugs and alcohol. I did too, um, and also just criminal lifestyle. So when mm-hmm. I I moved to Chicago and I was trying to make a change, and I how kinda, how old were you when you moved to Chicago? Uh, twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Um. So about nine years ago. Okay. Um. Yeah. So when I got here, I I cut everybody off, and I was just kind of by myself. And I like the only thing that made me happy was watching stand up comedy. Okay. And so I was just like well i don't have any friends i don't have anybody like what do i do and i'm like i should try doing stand-up like maybe just just to meet people if nothing else and so yeah i went to uh i don't know if you remember the place the edge comedy club was the first place i went uh dave odd used to run it it was was i don't know on uh weed street it was right on the corner of uh halstead in chicago by the chicago tribune it's now like a church or something but it used to be like the chicago performing arts center or something like that that was before me but there was like an open mic and showcase there and uh that's where i started and that one, and then you, you you said you moved here when you were twenty five, right? Yeah. And you so when you did you start getting trouble in Indiana? Was it like a small town or? Yeah, I mean, I got in trouble. Like when did you start getting in, like trouble? I like, started selling meth at school when I was like fourteen. I didn't I didn't have a car yet. And, okay. Uh, um, that didn't go well. I wasn't very good at that. No, no, no. was it? So, but you weren't cooking it. You were just selling. No, it. Yeah. yeah. So, I, any out in the country, there's <laughs> there's an abundance of methamphetamine. You know, in there's the, all yeah, the chemicals Indiana, you right? need, yeah. and like, believe it or not, Amish people are really into like they smoke into meth. That. Yeah, really. Usually during their like rum springer when they're not. You so know. yeah, the Amish have that. What is it? So that they have, that's that thing when they they let them out. Yeah, for like a when year? they're like from fifteen. Well, not a year. Fifteen until. 
you know, usually they're very early twenties, late teens where they decide to settle down, but some of them just last longer, you know? So, <laughs> so how many years can they go non Amish? I have that's no when idea. you can just do, I have man. no idea. And that's, so you were, you were, selling, I'm not Amish. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you were selling to the, to the Amish. No, I was selling two kids in school, but I was getting it from this Amish, this jerked over Amish, what we call him because he left the Amish church, but he, yeah, he, he left the Amish church and he was like this DJ and all this stuff. And he, he well, <laughs> <laughs> he had this van. He was like, he had this old black van with full of what DJ was equipment. Was Ezekiel or what? No, yeah. Uh, but he, yeah, he just, one day, like, we were hanging out, and he's like, hey, man, come, come Did back. Did you to- know he was, like, Amish or pre-Amish? Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure, yeah. I okay. actually met him at a church function. He was uh-huh. dating a girl in my church. Okay. And we were like, he's like, hey, man, let's. I think we were going to get something for a youth of function or something. And he picked up his mattress, and then he had, like, it was, like, out of a movie. It was, like, bags of meth uh-huh. already cooked up, just sitting there in uh-huh. these holes cut out in his mattress. And, uh, yeah, so then that was the first time I tried it, too, and I, uh-huh. like, did a line. And I didn't know what I was supposed to oh, feel like. Oh, you snort meth, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah it was okay. crank then is what we called crank, it. Crank, yeah. Uh-huh. So, I mean, it's just, like, trucker meth. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> and I did a line. I didn't know what I was supposed to do, and I'm like, I don't feel anything. He's like, we'll take another one. So I did another one. And then I was like up for three days. And, oh, really? Yeah, for it was three insane. days? Insane. Because I was like, you know, fourteen years old. And it was and, your first time. Yeah. Well, yeah, I remember. And it sucked because I was on a farm. We didn't have TV, and like, you know, it was it was a weird. So what did you <laughs> like? You were so is this when you were fourteen? You did first lines of math. Yeah. And so what'd you like? Nothing to do. What'd you what'd you do? Like you clean or I mean that's the thing. I here. I laid in my bed and just waited for morning because I couldn't. It's, uh, my parents were very strict and religious. Like there was no TV, there was no video games, there was nothing. It was what like, did you guys grow up? What was the reading books? Is what are we? What was the denomination? Oh, uh, Mennonite. Mennonite. So, oh, so that's like a little it's bit very close. Close but, to Amish, yeah, We had right? cars and electricity and radio. We just weren't allowed to like you guys wear like, shorts or watch TV. The, our mom, my mom wore that prayer veil and oh. dress and all that. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, Mennonites are just like Amish, not two point no. but. Like a little more. Well, there's different groups of Mennonite. There's different like denominations. So there's some that's actually drive horse and buggy, just like Amish people. Oh, yeah. okay, okay. So you guys are pretty. And then because I never, I've never. Well, I say I've never done meth. I've done Molly. What I call Molly meth. I don't know if you know. So yeah, Molly I've never got done Molly, but no, it's so Molly is like very. The only reason I've done it is because Molly got really popular, and then they started cutting with amphetamines. Yeah, basically, I've meth. Heard. Yeah, yeah, and then I did. We, me, and my friend did Molly. And then all of a sudden, I'm like, you're supposed to feel euphoria and stuff, and you're happy. And then I'm like, I'm just kind of paranoid, and, and I can't sleep. Like, yeah. And I went to this website called Arrowhead, where they kind of break down all the drugs and everything, and then give it's very informative if you want to do drugs. <laughs> but it's and I was like, and they were showing like, hey, Miami, they're they're cutting a lot of uh, of uh, of Molly with me. And I was like, dude, like, I didn't sleep on it. I just laid there, and I was like, this this isn't Molly. We did we did uh, we did Molly meth. Is it? You started telling, was it just for money or like? Actually, it, it was more for excitement. Okay. Because, like I said, I was adopted, so I knew enough about my previous life. I wasn't adopted until I was 10. Okay. Um, and I was in some foster care earlier and all this stuff. So, like, I had an idea of who I was supposed to be connected with. Okay. And it was like, I, this farm kid was not me. So, I was just oh. like, who am I supposed to be? So, I started going through an identity crisis, like, early, you know? And I was like, okay, well, my dad sold drugs. I know he's in prison for drugs, so... That's what I'm supposed to do. So that's what I started doing. <laughs> oh, okay. That makes, yeah, my dad. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I get like my dad's. So when when you were adopted, when you were ten, so when you you were in how old were you when you were in foster care? Uh, I went to foster care when I was for the first time when I was three. When you were three years yeah. old. But that something like that you wouldn't remember. Do you remember? What I do remember. It, oh, you really? Yeah. At three or more, like. Yeah. So you, what were your so your biological dad was he in, in jail when you were in foster care? Do you remember yeah, him? I mean, I, yeah, I remember. I think I remember the day he went away. But it's kind of vague, and just talking to family members, I still haven't got like a straight answer on everything. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I have more memories of my mom than my dad because my dad, like your I said, your biological was, mom. Yeah. Or? Okay. Yeah. He was in the streets and just you know selling drugs and going well, to jail. Was your biological mom? Is that the one who was in prison? Yeah, that's the one I talk about on oh, stage a lot. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So she's a, a loose cannon. Yeah, she's the one that was. Uh, yeah, she's been to robbery, uh, prison for robbery a few times, and. Yeah, she's <laughs> she's a character. <laughs> and then, and then uh, you're so you're no, so that's not your adopted parents, right? No, they, yeah, they, that's so, my biological parents. Yeah. Then, they, um, and then your your mom, you got a you got a you had a story where you go. Is that part? You have a story where you go to when she gets out of prison. Like, yeah. Is she in prison now or no? You said she I don't know where now. she. I stopped talking to her a few years ago. Okay. Um, that's when you cut people. Yeah, out. but I know she went. She's been to jail since then. I think that she's like either on her way to prison or maybe there now. I'm not sure. She had some charges pending last time I talked to her. Oh, okay. 
But you, 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 you have a story where you say you go pick her up, but you leave her. That, is that part made up, or you just leave her? That it, it's it's made. Yeah, I don't, okay. that didn't happen because <laughs> because I, I was hearing it. I was like, but have you picked her up? Have you? Yeah, driven? absolutely. Yeah. What uh, the women's prison or something? Yeah. Like, well, so I you, picked her up at the, at the jail a few times. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you're, um, yeah, because yeah, I was like, wait a second, <laughs> he just left her there uh, in the story. No, but, like I say about the comedy, it's like it's all based on on true. Based on but true story. I just don't. Yeah. Uh, and. What about the? You have a, a Christmas story. Um, that you, is absolutely is that, true. So what, what? What happened? So that what happened with that? How old were you with it? This is when you break. So this in was like my, when I was three. Yeah, and um, man, I <laughs> I don't remember now because I was so young. I do remember going in the window, and I remember this is you went to your yeah. Neighbors. So the story is yeah. So Christmas Eve comes and we don't have any presents and we have nothing, no treat, nothing. And so my brother and I, you know, we are had already been breaking into people's houses and okay. doing all kind of stuff. But we happened to break in the neighbor's house, and it was Christmas, and we we opened up all their presents because we were going to take their presents. Yeah. And um, then like we, <laughs> they had the Christmas cookies and the milk out, and we were just like little kids, so we we're just like you know, yay, you know, and we just like camped out, and made made ourselves at home, <laughs> and got caught. And then just got caught. But then you guys didn't like press charge. You were like, no, little, we were no. little kids. I mean, my brother was five, and I was three. So. Don't, when, but when did you get? So when when you were fourteen, you started selling, you started selling meth. Now, did you when you started doing that? Did you get more girls doing stuff like that, or no? Or because it, it's no, no. I mean no. Was it's, it decent money you were making? Or yeah, it no, was. But the problem was is that I wasn't in the right area for that because uh, city big city schools they had their own problems out in the country. We're mm-hmm. a little slower. We don't develop as fast down those lines. So okay. like meth was like. First of all, like everybody's parents is on meth, right? And so they're like, we don't need you to, to oh, sell us meth. Like, yeah, if we wanted oh. to do it, but we don't. You know, we're we're kids still. Like kids yeah. out there, they don't develop as quick, right? So yeah. they're like, marijuana is a huge thing at fourteen. Like if you smoke weed or a cigarette, that's crazy. You know, like so it's a little more old fashioned. So meth was like, what? You'd have a market for yeah, it. Yeah, there was then. no market whatsoever. There was like two kids, and then one of them told on me, and then like that was. It. <laughs> oh, he did. What? What? How, how did? Why did he tell on you? Was he mad at you? Or no, he, just, he was just a part. He got of caught. Some, or? No, he was a part of some. If I remember right, he was a part of a group, like a uh, after school group for troubled kids, you know, and and do, talking to a counselor or whatever. And he just happened to tell his counselor, like, yeah. And so of course she pressed him, and he was like, oh, it's you know, Jay, he's the one. He, if he's the one, you know, <laughs> he's the one. And did you get a? Was it? Did you get a slap on the wrist on that? Yeah. One, so I, the the good thing was for me at the time was I was on the football team and. So like they call, I remember they came and got me. I was in art class and they came and brought me down and they like had a cop outside and the, the athletic director and coach and principal were there. And they're like, look, dude, like we know what's going on. Give us everything. And if you do, like you're going to run laps after practice and we're not going to talk about it. But if you don't, we're going to get the cops. They're going to go find, and then uh-huh. you're really in trouble. So I was like, shit, it's in my locker. Like right now, okay. go get it. Yeah. Okay. So I think I had like nine grams of meth on me at the time. They just took it. I don't know what they did with it. Okay, and they didn't. They didn't press yeah, any charge ran, or anything. Yeah, ran a lot of laps. And then you kept selling meth after that, or did that no? Scare that's you? when I was like, okay, well, this isn't working. Okay, you know. Um, so that was the end of that. The meth. I, and then I started. Yeah, I sold weed and stuff, but not you know nothing big. But you went to you went to prison when you were sixteen, right? Yeah, that was for for guns. Okay, we well, yeah. just got caught with what happened. So with then, that? I mean, that was kind of all tied in after that. Like it was just the whole lifestyle. So I started carrying guns and then trying to sell them and then eventually i just got Were you successful at it or no i mean no, no no i was too stupid i okay. had no idea what i was doing like i said i was trying to be somebody that i thought i was supposed to be and it, it just wasn't working out <laughs> it just didn't have it in me. where'd you get where'd you get where'd you get caught was it at home or were you in the street like you know yeah i was actually it was um a saturday morning after football practice and i was at home actually <laughs> this is corny as hell but i was writing my girlfriend a letter because uh-huh. her and i had gotten in trouble and we couldn't call each other so i was actually writing her a letter to send in the mail and all Old of a sudden school. the sheriff's department showed up and took me to and did you get tipped or how did they how did they find out do you yeah, remember there were like some kids at school told and that, like somebody outside us like i can't remember the chain of events but okay. it was all kind of like a bunch of people told essentially and okay. i got into an altercation with a with another guy and and i threatened him with it and he told his mom and so it was oh. like a bunch of calls all in one week to the sheriff's department like this kid is like a loose cannon with these guns and he's gonna get somebody killed so they're like, let's lock them up. And they okay, so they showed up. Now, did you go to to uh, just right county jail, or is this? A, this yeah, so I was in. in yeah. yeah, so I was in interrogation for like, uh, I don't know, eight hours or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, then they tried me as an adult. They took me down to the county jail. And I sat there for a few months and then went to prison. Yeah. How long? Uh, what prison did you? Or how long were you in prison? 
uh, all together about two years, two and a half years. Yeah. Two years. Yeah. And, and then it, I got an early release. Wait, wait, wait. You one. so how many were there any other? So you were sixteen. Yeah. Were 16. there other sixteen year olds in prison or how? Did, I was the first one at the time. How did that? Was it because you had a public defender? It, I had actually a really good lawyer. My parents paid for the lawyer. The problem was is my parents, um, they were kind of fed up with me, okay. and they had a plan. They wanted me to go to like this boarding school okay and i was like no i'm not going so that's when i kind of that's when i started the whole um i don't know how to say it but that's when i i kind of stood up and was like no i'm a man now i'm emancipated by law because i'm in jail okay and i'm not i'm not going anywhere you tell me to go i'll rather go to prison oh so you were in the jail i was in the county jail waiting for sentencing and and my parents are trying to with this great lawyer try to get me sent somewhere else and I'm like, I'm in jail now. I'm fitting in. I'm figuring this game out, and I'm cool. Like, I'm not going to this boarding school. Okay. I'll just go to prison. I don't care. You know, so that's... And when you went... To, you weren't tatted... I, people don't see it. I'll put a picture, but you're, you're tatted up. You, were you tatted up yet? Did you have any tattoos? No, I got my prison? first one in jail, actually. It was, like, hand-picked with a staple in Indian ink. Where's that? Do you, can I see? Yeah, Where's it's uh, these these little initials right here. My brother's initials, actually. This stuff wasn't here. It was just these two What's, little... I see the R. C, CK is what that is. Oh, CK. Okay. It's my brother's initials, so... And that was the first. <laughs> that was so like how did, how did hours they do it? of them. So they they took a pen, they ripped the insides out, took a staple out of like some legal mail, wrapped some string around it, and just uh, I think they did Indian ink with something like they popped a socket and used a some, socket, uh, like an outlet. Oh, okay. yeah, and and then made a fire through the electricity, oh, and they burned what? like petroleum jelly and all this, and made some Indian ink with newspapers and all this stuff, and they. So like the 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 ink from the paper or I guess I didn't watch the process. Oh, you didn't watch the process? Yeah. No, no, I no. should have, but I didn't. And then that was your first. That tattoo. was it. And then he sat there for several hours just picking at it, like pick, pick, pick with his with his little pen looking thing. So he, oh, he picks it. Was it what's what he did? No, they don't use heat, right? It's just a, just he just stabs into your skin. Yeah, with it the, was just the sharp. And there was like so at the at the base of the showers there was like this. Um, slip proof stuff that actually was a lot like sandpaper so he yeah. took the staple and just like rubbed it across until it was super sharp and then he, oh. yeah rub, oh is that so the, the grip the stuff you don't fall in the shower like yeah uh, so he used on the that. outside of the shower he just rubbed it against there until it was super sharp and started dude prison is what is it and not i can't think of the word but it's so uh i don't know like you know what a, when a pothead is trying to figure out how to get high yeah you will figure out a way very, i can't think yeah. of the word right now but uh <laughs> i went to sleep like at three yesterday They're geniuses yeah you figured it out um but that one and then how was your first stint in prison so you're 16 now yeah. you said you sounded like you could you fit it in like you were like you felt comfortable there or yeah i just um like was there certain people that like took you in like yeah did you meet so, certain people initially when i went in i i the only thing i had going for me that was the fact that i was like the youngest inmate there okay. at the time when I first went to jail and um I I was so naive I think that people kind of left me alone. I made oh. friends very quickly. People okay. were cool with me. No one like tried to take advantage of me right away. Um but then I got mouthy. I started figuring stuff out and then mm. you know I had to I had to stick up for myself and fight a few times, but after that um I had a guy that kind of uh mentored me a little bit and uh he's a guy that's in prison right now. Um his name's Blease White. Okay. And he's just this uh, massive ex-college football player that is in prison right now for murder and attempted murder and all kind of stuff. But he he kind of took me under his wing and kind of taught me the ropes. And that was, yeah, after I like, that, I was good. So what? There's, there's specific, what are like some of the specific rules he told you at the time? Anything you remember? Like, oh, don't do this, don't do that? or I can't remember. He taught me a lot of life lessons, actually. It was really weird. He taught me a lot about, he's a black guy. He taught me a lot about racism. And in prison and jail, it's... Racism right? is the leading factor of, of everything and how it moves, race. You know, it's like everyone out here on the streets, they're all into gangs and stuff. But once you go into prison, the gangs stop and it's all about race. Race. Yeah. And so I didn't know how to navigate that because I didn't, my my family didn't teach me that. You know, they didn't teach me about racism and all that. And we actually had a black guy that worked on our farm as a hired hand and was a part of our life. And mm-hmm. so I never thought about that. So when I got there, I was naive to all that type of stuff. I didn't know. And yeah, yeah. So sense. he protected me because the white inmates started to get kind of mad because I would just naturally talk to anybody, you know. So if if oh you know, you're not supposed to, yeah. Really. So if like okay, so for instance, in the county jail, there's a day room, and there's a hierarchy to that where the black inmates ran the television, and I just walked to the front and sat down with them and started just watching watch TV. TV. Just and, watch yeah, TV. Yeah, yeah. And, and all the white men say like, "Well, you you can't do that," and I'm like, "Well, I just did." Like, what what <laughs> what's the issue? You know, so. 
like I said, I think the fact that I was so naive kind of saved my saved me a little bit because I and didn't the, do anything out of malice. I just did what I would normally do. And then the, the, those white did the white printers start messing with you or no? Yeah. So yeah. they they started they started Is that how you saying fighting? Uh-huh. yeah. So they said a lot of little stuff. And then and then I found out that my father was actually in prison and he he was one of the uh, members of the Aryan Brotherhood. And so they knew who he was, and so there was a higher expectation on who I was supposed to be. Oh, okay. Um, and that's really so. You're like, oh, you're that's what's his name's kid. Yeah. So you need to be with us. Yeah. Right? You yeah, have yeah. to be, or yeah. you're like, you're worse than anybody who wouldn't be because of who you're associated with uh-huh. or who your father is. So like, you're really disrespectful at this point. And so this bleach white guy, he took me under his wing, and he was the one dude who nobody would mess with across the board. Not even wait, the who CEOs. was this white guy? He was bleach white was okay. his name. Yeah, he was the black. He was the the black guy that yeah yeah oh, he was a football yeah, okay yeah, yeah. okay so I'm I'm um he was like one of my first cellmates and he just taught me everything I mean he, you know I can't like I said I can't give you any I mean he taught me lessons like subconsciously too like just I remember one day we were sitting at the he would have this habit where new inmates would come into the system and he would sit down and make a like a prison cake or slammy with them and what that is is like so like a slammy is like you mix ramen noodles with cheese sauce and chips and dorito like everything (laughs) and just pile it in and you melt it down in a bag of hot water Uh and you spread it out and sprinkle cheese or whatever on it whatever you have it you know how it taste awesome yeah and it was and in jail you don't get a lot of food so it fills you up because it's all carbs and it's all you know so it, you get full quick. Have, have you you never made a slimy outside? Have you ever made a slimy I outside have, of jail? I have, yeah, for many times actually. Because I'm, I'm gonna message you for the recipe. I'm curious. Yeah. So it's it's. Do you remember the exact? No. Well, the basic is we call it like to start off. It's mixed. So what a guy would do is you take all your ramen noodle packages and you break it down into small pieces. You bust it up, and you pour it in a bag. Mix it with all the different seasonings: chicken, beef, everything. And then you would crush up Doritos and like puffy Cheetos. Okay. And put that into the bag. And then when you, if that was a quick meal, so what you would do is you take a cup and you fill it halfway up, then you pour water in and let it set and soak up, and you'd eat that, and it would be really filling. But if you wanted to make the slammy, you'd make that, you pour it out on the table, and then you'd mix like whatever from lunch, chicken okay. pieces chicken, of chicken uh-huh. or beef or whatever, cheese sauce. Jalapeno, whatever you get your hands Prison on. Prison hamburger yeah. helper kind of. Exactly. Yeah, what yeah, it is. yeah, yeah, yeah. Up and what you do is if, you know, you didn't have a lot of money or you were at the end of commissary and you were waiting, everyone, if you were cool, you would pitch in and make a big one and you spread it out on the table on chip bags and everyone would sit there with their spoons and just kind of dig in. It was kind of a sign of like, it's like breaking bread with people, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So, and that's when the, when the new ones would come well, in. Well, no, this is what you did. So as a sign of respect, you if if you respected somebody and you wanted them to be a part of your group, you would invite them into that. So oh. Belis and I would every single once a week, I think it was a Sunday morning, we would sit there together, him and I in the day room, we would make a slammy and he would invite new inmates or other people outside because he was his own he wasn't a part of any group. It was okay. he was he ran that place and he didn't need a, a group of people around him. So him and I would sit there and he would invite people in. So one day a white guy came in who was clearly a racist. He had the tattoos. He, he was a big mm-hmm. white dude. And he came in and Belize asked him if he wanted to sit down. And he just kind of looked at him and looked at me and he's like, no, I don't, I don't break bread with niggers. Uh. And I expected Belize to like just demolish this dude. Cause you know, but he didn't, he was just like, oh, okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, okay. cool. And the dude walked away and I'm just like, how is this possible? Like what? <laughs> I was confused, you know? And he was like, <laughs> yeah, he's he a said? real dude. Like he, he's like, you need to understand something. He said, any man that sits there in, in, in your face and tells you what they think of you, you don't have to agree with it, but you have to respect that. Oh, yeah. He said, now, if something fit, happens yeah. in here, I know where he stands. He let me know where he stood from the beginning, so I have to respect him as a man. Oh. I don't wish he didn't threaten me. He didn't, you know, he told me what he felt about me. Oh, wow. So I'm going to leave it alone. He's like, it's no big deal. I know where he stands. I respect the man, period. Yeah, and, and it's like, Man, I don't know if you get this outside of prison. This vibe. You you meet certain people. I don't know, and I call it the regular world, right? And they're either I don't know if they're overly nice or they're overly something. They're but fake. It's, yeah, they're fake. They're fake. And because I was telling yeah. my friend about it, about it, and it's like, <clears throat> and that's when th- that throws me off. Like I don't know, my radar goes. I grew up with like you know knowing certain people, con people, things like that. So like even in comedy, there's certain comics you'll meet, and you're like they the way they start talking, you're like all of a sudden my guard goes right up. Yeah, when, absolutely. Because they're overly nice or overly something. It's like all right, you're 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 fake. You're medicated. Like what are you? It's like, what's what happening you, with you? What's, what's happening on? to you? Like on the inside, are you a bad person or what are you? Are you trying to get something out of me? Like what? Right. What's what? That's what's going on. So like I, I try to tell it to my some other friends. They're not. They're 
I would say, I don't know if it's more naive or, or something like, you know, they didn't grow up like that. So they didn't understand like, oh, look, there's, yeah, there's, they don't have that. Yeah. That yeah. they have a don't cause that it's sense, six yeah, sense, the six yeah. sense. It's like, you know, they don't want to be judgmental, but it's like, I, I just, I, it picks up real quick and it's like, wait a second. Like, so I'm on it really quick. So, and so that was, you guys did two years there and then you got out. So you got out when you were 18. Well, also uh, what ha- ended up happening was they called me back in for a um, modification of my sentence. Okay. And they gave me several options of where I could go as far as a boarding school. It was an, and I didn't ask for the modification. My parents did this. Oh, I was actually sitting outside. in prison and all of a sudden there I get, you know, the CO comes like, "Hey, pack your shit. You're going back to county for 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 court." And I'm like, "What?" Huh? Yeah. And so I went back and they're like, "Well, they they came in and they, the head of this uh boarding school came in and he showed me what he where he wanted to send me, which is in the Dominican Republic." And it looked on the brochure like it was this beautiful place, like a resort. But yeah. I knew there was something off about this place, and I was like, "I don't, I don't want to go." He's like, "Well, we have this place down in southern Indiana that's not as extreme, but well, it's called New Horizons." And he was like, "You know, it's a boarding school for like, you know, that's what you know." And I saw this sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So well, they got shut down. There was like a documentary about them because they were abusing children. And oh, really? Yeah. I so, looked that up. Yeah. So. um <laughs> I was like, yeah, I'm not going, I'm not going. And that night I remember sitting in jail and I'm like, I was sitting back in the same exact cell that I had sat at, you know, a couple a year before, before I went to prison. And I was like, I don't want Oh, because you're at the jail. Yeah, I'm yeah. back at the jail. And I'm like, you know what? What am I doing? Like, put my pride down. Let's let's get out of here. You okay. know what I mean? It's time. And so I ended up going and spent another year there. At, the, at, uh, at Horizons? The, yeah. And they, I went up to Canada. I spent, you know, a couple months in Canada, like a survival school. Uh, as part of that program too, and uh, you know, learn how to build shelters and <laughs> I mean all kind of stuff. Oh, it's yeah. just like like being out in the woods. Yeah, it was a, like... it was literally a wilderness survival school, faith based. So like it was, you spent most of your day doing exercises, and then the second half of your day, I mean, it was just military boot camp, is what it was, uh, with a Christian twist on with it. With a Christian yeah. little, little uh, yeah. sprinkle. Uh-huh, okay. Did you like it or I don't? I hated it. Really? I was so excited to go because I'm a country boy, and I was when I found out I was so excited. And I got there, and I'm like, "This is just the worst." Was it? Was it the the people, the environment, the other? It was. It. I don't. I honestly, I don't know. I think at that point I had transformed because of prison. I just didn't have time in my mind for that type of shit. Prison kind of serious made me a little more serious. And I looked around at all these kids and I'm like, I didn't fit in with anybody. Uh You know, there was kids from like 14 all the way to 18. And I'm, you know, right at 18. And I'm like, this is, uh, I don't want to be here. Like like goofy or something. Yeah. Everybody was goofy and, you know, and it was all this fake. And they they would, the staff members would stand over you and yell at you. And I'm like, dude, I will cut you. (laughs) (laughs) I am not one of those kids, you know, like this. And so we bumped heads a lot, you know, and Uh they, and uh, I ended up doing really well, though. But I did it. I did it. I can proudly say I did it my way. You okay. know what I mean? I, okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And you did that for a year. Yeah. And then you moved back to Indiana. And then right? I got out, yeah, and I went. I was on my own. I went out to, I moved to the to Elkhart, Indiana, which is the closest kind of city to the to the country out there. But that actually is not a very, it's a pretty bad place anyway. It's one of those, kind of like Flint, Michigan or any of the other, like okay. small cities that just are just, <laughs> street yeah. life is horrible you know drugs and gangs and all that kind of stuff and then when you went back when you went to Elkhart you were just were you living on your own there you, was I was girl? all over the place yeah okay. I was living with, with my first wife for a little bit and then I was living with girlfriends and then I had my own you didn't have any kids and, yet there yet, yeah yet. I had my young my oldest daughter I had her when she when I was um, I think 20 19 or 20 okay and this is when, when you got out and yeah. you went to um, to Elkhart right yeah Okay, and then did you you ended up back? Did you ever go? Did you go back to prison? You're just in and out no, of jail. Or no, I learned. You learned. Okay, so yeah. that you only went to prison. Uh, just, just, just. I went to jail later for a, a battery for a couple of days, but I did you I end learned. Fight or yeah, I, but I learned. I learned how to be a criminal without going to jail. That's something Blease taught me. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, it's like um, man. It was there's a movie where you go. You won't. I forgot what movie it is, but like. You go, oh, is it maybe it's Blow, right? Or something like that. I don't know if you ever saw Blow. I have, yeah. Yeah, he like, he go, he he went in with a, whatever, like a bachelor's and yeah. weed and came out with That's a, whatever, a cocaine. I tell people that all the time. When I went to jail, I was a young, dumb, naive kid. I was not a criminal. I had no criminal intent. I was just a kid lost trying to find my way. I was not a threat. But jail and prison 
I learned some things, you know, so it was like, <laughs> I became a criminal and I, I was far worse when I left than when I went in. Cause now you knew what you were doing. Now I knew what I was doing. You were sharp. Yeah. A lot sharper than uh, a lot of the buddies that I met in there, uh, you know, have gone back and forth to jail and, uh, I, I learned how to not do that. <laughs> what, uh, uh, Hey, you earlier said something about money and how did how does money work in jail? You just have you were saying like if you have enough money for the can, well you, commissary, yeah. So you can I mean you can go put money on 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 someone's book. So if someone's in jail, it used to be I, I don't remember how, I don't know how it works now. I haven't been there in a long time, but I believe it's you know you go in and you and there's like a almost like an ATM machine. You can put money in. There's like number you can you know go on the screen and type in the the number of the person you know the, the inmate number and it'll put that on their account and they'll have that money to spend on commissary, which is Pretty much a commissary is just, you know, you get this piece of paper once a week where you can order items. They have like a set list of items, food items. You can order shoes. You can order shampoo, just basic stuff, and you can have it in your cell. Okay. And then um, the did you only get that one? T- did you get more tattoos in, your, in that two-year stint or just... No, you got your tattoo in jail or in prison? In jail. In jail. Yeah. Right. I got most of my tattoos when I got out by other ex-inmates. And, okay. Yeah. And, and that's now? Like I said, I was far worse <laughs> after I got out of prison. And far worse. What kind of stuff were you doing when you got out? Uh, like just robberies or? Yeah, I did a lot. Yeah, I didn't sell drugs. Dr- I mean, I sold a lot of pills. Okay. I was into pills quite a bit, like narcotics, like uh Vicodins Were you taken to or? Yeah, 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 yeah. That's how I got into it. Um, uh, So I, I would sell a lot of pills and then I did a lot of robberies and stuff like that. What kind of, what, uh, just, what, what is it? What is it? Hydro, hydrocodone or? Any kind of. What about Xanax? Yeah, Xanax, Adderall, Vicodin, Adderall. Morphine, a lot of you know Percocet, whatever. Those types of those types of drugs. Yeah, doctor prescribed drugs. And the, oh, okay, but then you didn't get into. So this is this is from twenty one to twenty five when yeah. you were you were in Elkhart. What? Well, what, no, from like nineteen to twenty five. Nineteen to yeah. twenty five, and this is all in Elkhart in that area. Did you move around or were you just yeah. in that no? Area? I lived in that area in Michigan, Lower Michigan, and northern indiana pretty much what was it what was the thing that you were like man so this i mean you have how many kids you got five five kids did you have your kids in that time or you had some after yeah all during what that's our that's all during and then when did you decide to make like man i'm moving it was it to chicago or when did you yeah. leave that area what like was uh, it something that did it like man i can't fuck, no it right. wasn't anything big it just i i for so long early on i like i told you earlier on when i was a kid i thought uh who i was supposed to be is like my dad yeah and after i got back in contact with my mom and my dad and the people in that circle and lived that for a little bit i was like okay oh then you realize yeah, like, I'm man, like, yeah, I, be like I, yeah i don't want to do i'm good at it but it's not where am i going everybody uh-huh. i knew was in prison everybody i knew was dead uh-huh. um so i was just like man this isn't what i want for my life i want to do something you know so it was just kind of. It was no set one thing that scared me straight. I just decided it was enough. Yeah, your your your, your parent. Your your dad's still in prison. You said no. He's out. He's out. What did what did he get in prison for? Uh, I believe dealing cocaine. Oh, dealing cocaine. Yeah, I think oh. he did ten years straight when I was a kid, and then back again. I haven't talked to him even longer because I don't. You know, he's still in the Aryan Brotherhood and still a part of that. Yeah, my dad. Well, he's not. Let's see. My dad went to. He got his first tattoos at Cook County Jail. Okay. Right, yeah. Cook County Jail, which is a pretty shitty jail. I don't know if you've been over there. No. Because I've I've been I've only been to jail a few times. I've been to Lake County Jail, um, for a for a gun charge mm-hmm. for a bullshit. I don't know. if... Well, over here in Illinois, you can't at the time before concealed carry. You can only have a pistol, but you can have it loaded. So it had to be in a case, and the thing had to be separate. Okay. And I remember when I got my pistol, I was like, all right. And I looked at the rules. I followed it, and it's like. It said you can have a pistol and you can have a uh, the magazine separately, right? And I was looking at the rules and I was like, whatever, okay. And I go right, and I'm driving. I went to my my girlfriend's house, helped her out with something, and I was driving to Walmart to go buy. Some, I think some cleaning solution for that. I just bought this pistol, right? Yeah. And I get over there, and then my uh, I get pulled over, right? And then the guy asked me if I have anything on me, and then I was the that whole week I was watching a bunch of videos and stuff. <laughs> About like the laws yeah. and the rules because so you, you know, thought you were good. I was yeah. wanted, I yeah. wanted to make sure I did things right, and I I must have seen a video in a different state or something, right? Um, and I in, in my head I was like, wait, I think I'm supposed to tell him if I'm not, it might be a felon, or it's it's, it's really bad if I yeah. don't or something. And I was like, so I told him, ah, uh, so I'm thinking I'm doing the right fucking yeah, thing, and of I'm course. like, I got my uh, yeah, I have my I have my Glock with me, but it's in the back, it's over here, and it's in the case and not loaded. 
And all of a sudden, when I told him that, like everything yeah, changed, it's over with, yeah. and I was like, I was like, hold on. And then there's another car pulling up, and I was, what the, what the fuck's going on? Like yeah. I'm doing the right thing, and he goes and he opens, you know, like where is it at? It's, it's in my book bag, it's in the case, and it's back. And yeah. from the rules I know, it's like it's fine. And then he sees it, so it's in the case. You got the magazine over there. The magazine's loaded, but nothing. Yeah. The pistol's not loaded. And from what I read, it's that was a that's fine. Thing. How right. I read it, but now he's telling. Now he tells me like, oh, you can't have it like that. And then, and I'm trying to think, and I was like, I swear it's, uh, and I don't have enough, he's a fucking cop, but yeah, I don't have enough information to be him. like, to argue, if, if, well, if I knew my, sh- if I had it down, I, I would, not yeah. argue, but I'd be like, look, yeah, I know the rules. Point. Yeah, Absolutely. like I know the rules, like now, and then, and all of a sudden, him and, and him and the his officer come, and they're in the, and they pull out this big book, and, and they're start by my the trunk, <laughs> and they're looking at the book, and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? And they're like, you're going to jail. And I was like, for what? I, and I was like, no, and I was like. In my head, I was like, all right, all right whatever, man. It's because, you know, and, and I'm going, I'm driving. And it, and I remember I'm driving to jail, right? And I'm, I'm fucking pissed, dude. I'm so, I like, I hate this guy right now because it's like, you, because I'm trying to do the right thing. And it's like, this motherfucker. And he's trying to say something to me like, you know, uh, you know, normally you seem like a nice guy. I would let you go. But, you know, something about my boss. Was, and, and, and in my head, I'm just yeah, like. Whatever, dude. Yeah. <laughs> fuck off, dude. Like, it's, it's not the first time I went to to jail and i'm like all right all right that's and he's oh then he does this this thing he starts telling me he's like oh but you know what you've been re-, he starts pulling i don't know i'm sure you dealt with this the the cop lies were like oh yeah. hey you know um you seem like a nice guy you seem like a good person uh if you sign this confession thing yeah, or yeah. something yeah yeah <laughs> we'll be really yeah we'll be that's what happened to me too yeah yeah, yeah. he'll be like we're, we'll be really uh you know be cool and i've dealt with jail stuff with my dad and things like that so i'm more aware of what's going on and I was like, if you sign this, then you know, it'll be really helpful. And I was like, I just look. I know what he, I already know what he, I know what he's doing. Yeah, so I'm like, no, I'm good. He's like, are you sure? And I'm like, no, I'm because I know I'm yeah, gonna yeah. spend the night in jail. I'll talk to my lawyer. I'll fucking figure it out. Like I know what you're doing because it that happened with my dad. You, that happened to you, or yeah. what happened with you? Well, it was I was a kid, you know, so I didn't yeah, really know. And you didn't just know like, yet, man. Yeah, and I, and I now looking back, I if I would have just got my own lawyer, even a public defender, I could have beat the case so easy. But I didn't know any better. And so they're like, so this happened, this happened, this happened. They're reading it to me. And they're like, you need to sign this. And I'm like, no, nah, I'm not. And they're like, listen, if you sign this, you're going home. Yeah, they do and that, And I was right? like, for real? <laughs> like, And it's like 4 o'clock in the morning by now. And so I'm like, uh, okay. And then, yeah, I signed it. So I'm thinking I'm going home. And then they're like, yeah, you, 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 do you know where you're going now? And I'm like, juvenile detention? You know, they're like, no, you're going to jail. <laughs> Oh, the jail. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I, man, and I didn't know, and I'm sitting there in, in fucking jail. But you know what happened with that case? Nothing. I didn't, I went the next day. So finally, like, I'm right now, I'm trying to avoid for work or, or my mom to find out. Yeah. Because my, well, you know why? It's not like, oh, I'm in prison or in jail, but it's like my dad got deported for a gun charge, right? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. In Illinois, maybe a year before that. And my mom, when I bought the gun, she's like, Giovanni, why are you buying a gun? Just so you're going to go to jail like your dad. I was like, Mom, I'm buying a gun. I know what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about, yeah. You don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> and then, so I was sitting there in jail. I was like, God damn it. Who the fuck do I call? Yeah. And like, and I'm like, what? And I know, you know, three, at this point, this is post cell phone. So I was like, I know three numbers, yeah, maybe. Right. And I'm, so I call my buddy in Texas a bunch of times. I guess on my ex girlfriend's, or I don't know if we're dating or not. I, on her number a few times and i called i leave some voicemails and i'm like i'm just sitting there like all right so i just don't want to no call no show right because then that's going to bring questions i just i want to be able to fucking call in yeah. to work so they don't ask me like yeah. oh what you what the jail for guns you know mm-hmm. so then i'm sitting there and i'm like fuck man what's and i'm and then i'm just sitting there with some dude who just got popped with maybe a few pounds he's wearing a sons of anarchy shirt he got popped with a few uh a few pounds of cocaine or <laughs> not cocaine weed right and month like he's trying to sell weed right yeah he's sons of anarchy shirt he's like a dude. he's trying to live that life he's yeah. just selling weed and then oh my guy showed up dookie his name was dookie right mm-hmm. uh he was a buddy of mine and he i'm sitting in a holding cell and i'm like what's up dookie like he's he comes in i'm like oh my god we're both in like in jail together he got popped for weed you know what i mean yeah. no he got popped because uh i think probation or something like it. it's all Something's this stuff small, yeah. he's like he's like he wasn't a criminal at all but it now, now, now he's all into weed stuff and things, but he was always getting hit for weed when yeah. it was illegal here in Illinois. It's legal now in Illinois. Are we? Yeah, it is. yeah. And then, so then I remember, and I and then I'm just sitting there. And all the, they call me right, and then I'm like, uh, "What's going on?" And they call me, and I see, 
and then I see his signature, right? That somebody bonded me out. And one of those voicemails got to somebody or something. Yeah. And I saw my ex girlfriend's name and I saw her signature. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God. Thank God. I, I, said, <laughs> I was like, I bought her. We were on and off. I think we broke. I bought her like the last time we broke up, I bought her an iPad. Like, I don't even know if we were together, but like, yeah. look, man. I was like, what do you, this is my, my going away. You're like, look, you saved my ass. And I told yeah. her that day, I promised her, like, I owe you something or whatever. Yeah. And I got her an iPad when they were way more expensive. But it was like, and the, the guy didn't want to let me out. Really? He was like, he's like, no, because of this rule, we can't. He has to stay. He has to stay at the prison. And it was like, the other guy was like, no, you know, that's, he's like, nope, that's not the rule. And, and the guy who was processing me, right, I find out I'm having, I'm on my grandpa, my friend's grandpa's deathbed. Like, it was my friend's grandpa's, like, best friend. And we're all in the hospital together, right? And I'm telling him the prison, and I look at him, and he looks at me, and I'm like, because they check all your tattoos, yeah. and I'm talking about it, and I was like, wait a second. Joe, it was you, and it was like he was a guy, yeah, he who 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 processed me, but that was just, just that was just Lake County, Cook, Cook County is where my dad got his first tattoos right here when he was 43 years old or something like Why? that. Before he got, <laughs> be, I know my dad, like, see, this is uh, the thing with you, like, my I grew up my dad up until he was 16, but he was always kind of like my dad was a coyote, so yeah. he would bring people yeah. over the border, and then he had regular jobs up until like he fucked up his eyes painting or something like that. Like he had all the dust or yeah. whatever. And then, you know, he started doing that stuff. And then he, got, yeah, he got popped with a, a pistol. And then he did the it's same. Him. Well, he was in, he was in jail for about, maybe about for a few months, but he was on immigration hold. So okay. he couldn't just bond out yeah. and go to his He's court stuck. dates. Yeah. And he got, and he got frustrated and he was like, and finally he was like, you know, I think I'm going to beat the case or something like that. And me and me, when the Lord, we're going visit with the Lord. It's like, look, man, just wait. Do not do anything. We should, we should be able to beat the case. So he thought, he thought, he didn't wait. He thought, I'm going to get out. I'm going to take the risk of immigration not picking me up. And then, so he signed a confession. He got out. Immigration picked him up. By that time, spent all the money on this lawyer and then oh. all the immigration lawyer and then, and he's gone. He just messaged me the other day on Facebook for money though. Really? But I'll send him, I'll wait, I'm going to wait. I yeah. play this game with him. Um, you know, I, I, he'll send it to me and I'll wait and I, he has to send me another message and then I'll respond yeah. and then I'll be like, you know what? Uh, I get, I got to wait a few checks or whatever. And then what? Then I wait for the amount for the amount for him to ask me hundred bucks on some yeah. seventy five. There you go. And it'll hit me up. <laughs> <laughs> That's the relation. And I hit me and it'll hit me up in uh, uh in a few months. So then, sorry when you um. Uh, so you came? Did you move to Chicago? Where'd you move? We're on the South Side now. Where'd yeah. you when you first moved from Elkhart? Where'd you move to? To the South Side. To the South Side. Yeah. Um. Would you live on your own with with no with I, a, I'm, a lady? I'm, I'm, yeah, with my ex. With my your ex wife. Yeah. Okay. And then with the kids or no? Yeah. Okay. And then what, what would you start? Would you start working? What? Because you were, were your ex? Was it felony? Were you ex con? Yeah, could you? Yeah. So, finding a job. What kind of? Can you only do? You were doing construction. <clears throat> what jobs could you pull um, out at that time? Well, I did. Uh, first of all, I did some stuff when I first got out that allowed me to kind of bury my. I don't want to get into it too deep. Okay, so that's I, I was able to to do some things to allow my name to be cleared. Okay. Um. So unless you know. The actual name to use you can't look my stuff up oh, okay um so like somewhat I was at, expunging sort of but something will, like yeah that. something like that okay yeah um but it's not yeah oh I, okay i got you um so pretty much i lived under a, a different identity so i was you live like a Mexican. yeah so okay. i i was able to do whatever i wanted and I, I my first job was at tribune at chicago tribune um i worked at the on the machines there um and that's the same time i started doing comedy too okay. about that same time like on the machine, like on the big presses and things. No, like that? on the insert machines, the machines that will insert the like sales papers into the main newspaper. There's actually a machine that does it. They don't hand stuff. You know what I mean? Like when you get a newspaper and they have all the sales papers in the middle. Um, that's what I did. Okay, and then did but you did you do construction? You had a I think I you had a story about a, a construction. Yeah, story. so I mean I do, yeah I've worked construction. I've, I've been roofing now for I don't know how many years. Okay, um, I still do it part time. Okay. Um, and yeah, I worked in residential remodel for a little while and that didn't work out very good. And, um, so yeah. Well, cause I mean, I think you brought it up and I, I know a lot of construction workers, you know, people in that industry, plumbing construction and like people don't know. It's like, it's a cast of characters. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's, it's most people are drunks, alcoholics, drug addicts, good yeah, work. Everyone like, like 90%. Yeah. Yeah. 90%, 90%. Um, and I'm assuming ex cons. Yeah. You know what I mean? Hey, were you, did you see on your Facebook was, you you can you can you can vote now, right? Or yeah, you can vote. I can, you can vote, vote for yeah, a while. I can vote for quite a while, but I might be able to now. Yeah. 
Okay, so now you can do just kind of most regular. Yeah, I'm things. pretty much normal now. I mean, my yeah, I'm, I don't have any problems other than all these tattoos I have. That's the only tie to the the ancient past. I'll call it. Hey, now with the tattoos, like when you meet, do, are you are you single? Or are you dating anybody right now, or are you with a lady? Yeah, I oh, mean, you, yeah. you're with a lady. Yeah. Okay, I'm saying like when when you when you would meet a girl. I don't know if you were single. Like, what, what would, would it attract certain women with the tattoos that it wouldn't, you shouldn't attract, or how, how was it? Yeah, I, I did find that it was kind of, it's actually kind of frustrating. You know, it's, uh, it, I shouldn't bother me, but you get tired of like every chick's like, oh, your tattoos are so cool. Yeah, right. you know, and you'd be like, oh, I'm, I'm more than just my tattoos, lady. <laughs> if, if it, look, people can't see. It, I put it like you got, you got prison tattoos. Like, what is it? You got? Does that say bar or what? yeah? What is what is bar? So was that? bar none was a group that I was ah. in years ago. Um, is that out or in a, in, in prison? Out, yeah. out of prison. It was like a clique. Okay. Of sorts. So you weren't really there was it was gangs out of. I was in never Indiana? in a yeah. I was never in a gang, but I was associated with a lot of gangs. So I've I've actually had ties to Chicago for years before I moved here. So, um, yeah, I know a lot of a lot of people. And how do you feel? How would he um? Did you like your kid? Did the kids ask you about that too? The jail time, like, they. I don't really talk about it much. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, they know. Uh-huh. Uh, I think they all know. Yeah, but I don't. I don't really talk about it. Okay. I kind of. I like to just move forward in life. You know, okay. like, not to say in this no, individual no, no. situation that I don't. I don't mind, but I mean, just overall, like, I just don't. I believe in the only way to move forward from stuff is to just let it go. Yeah. And so like, yeah. when I move, like, I just don't. I don't talk to the people I used to talk to. I don't talk about the stuff I used to talk about, and that's just kind of how I move, you know. And then, and now it's like, as far as the acting, so now it's like, what do you want to? How um, is it? Is it independent films or like what stuff are you? Because right now it's mostly you get cast as a criminal mostly, or you know what? Um, when I did background work, I I I, I was, and it was kind of something I was scared of, but I'm it's I'm coming to find out that. Uh, the industry has been pretty accepting of me doing other stuff. So like my most recent role that I filmed for, um, I played a father actually like a, a father with a past. Yes. Uh-huh. But not like a current criminal. And he was actually like, it was, a, it's a short film about, um, a, um, a time between the father and the son and like a discussion they have. And, um, it's actually kind of deep, you know, and it, it has nothing to do with like a criminal element. And then, um, the one before that, I actually played George Zimmerman in a short film called 71 Oh, Seconds. did that one, that come out? No, it's not That's, out yet. No, no. Yeah, I was just still waiting on the trailer. It's supposed to be coming out this month. And okay. the film comes out like May of this year. Okay. And then you just do the acting. You never, would you want to do any directing or anything like that? Or do you want to focus on the acting? Yeah, Have you no, seen, I, mean, I don't I, know how it works. Yeah, if I if I ever had the opportunity, obviously I would. But I, I notice, I notice now that I'm in the industry and I'm rubbing shoulders with people in the industry, it seems to me that one of the things that bring a lot of people down is this desire to do it all yeah. and they can't really tie down to one you can't get good thing. One. And so you can't get good at it. So one thing I decided to do like with comedy, even like I, I rarely do comedy now. Mm-hmm. I only do it if, if someone reaches out and books me. Okay. Um, so I am a hundred percent focused on acting and that's it, you know? And then do you, uh, when you started, did you take lessons first or you just started? No, no lessons, yeah, no, right? I didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I've always been the type that I don't believe in spending money on something that I can learn on my own. Uh-huh. Uh, like with stand up comedy, you know, everyone's like, you should go do an, a class. And I'm like, I'll just sweat it out on stage. Like, you know what I mean? Like I'll yeah. man up, I'll sweat it out on stage. And if I don't get good after X amount of years of doing open mics or whatever, then I'm not meant to do comedy. No one's going to teach you how to be good at it. Acting was different simply because there are certain things in the craft outside of the actual ability to act that you have to know. And if you don't know that, you're going to screw yourself. Like me, like the audition process. I've bombed some auditions in front of Claire Simon on speaking roles for television shows because I just did not know the proper way to, to enter like the room. Like, what are some of the stuff you messed up? Well, so... When you didn't um, the, the When I would walk in the room, it would, it would, it, I would go straight into the room and then I would start my presentation of who I was as I stood in front of Claire Simon, in front of the the camera to start my What's audition. Claire, Claire Simon. Claire Simon is from Simon Casting. She oh, casts okay. for okay. all She's the television shows in in Chicago. In Chicago. Okay. Yeah. Um. So what I learned is that you start before you get in the room. You come in 
You know what I mean? Like they're watching you the moment you walk through the door. Uh. So I'm in my head. I'm nervous. I have stage fright or whatever you want to call it. So I'm coming in. I'm kind of nervous and I'm getting there. And then when I get in front, I'm like, okay, now I'm ready. Well, they don't want to see that. You know what I mean? They want to see a guy who comes in there confident and knows his stuff and isn't afraid to ask questions and all that. And I would just go in there with like, let me just get through this. Let me just, because I was so nervous, uh, you know, and okay. scared. Cause I'm like, you know, whatever. It's just like stage fright in a sense. Right. What, so what are some of the stuff you use to get, to get rid of that? Or what do you, you got some techniques? I don't have a technique at all. What I, I just, it's something I had to go through in my, just keep in going myself. Through it. Yeah. Uh-huh. And they're just, and now like, so I went to, I went to, um, Chicago Actor Studio a while back had a um, audition workshop, mm. and it was a free thing. And they would and uh, the, the instructor there, uh, Edward Fogel, was you know he just went over kind of the basics. And I learned so much in like that you know hour long presentation, which half of it was him actually people paid extra money for them to do like a a, a quick. Um, what's it called slate or whatever so like literally 30 minutes of him just saying this is how you should audition changed the game for me like (laughs) i learned so much in that moment so i guess going back full circle to what the question in the beginning you know about classes i found that i had to take acting classes just to learn because there's so much to to me stand-up comedy is you stand there with a microphone and you make people laugh it's basic However you got to do that, whether you're over the top and doing hysterical shit like Jim Carrey or whoever, you know, Dane Cook throwing water bottles everywhere, or you're standing there like my favorite Ron White and just telling stories, whatever you're doing, Mm -hmm. that's what you do. Now, there's other stuff to that also, like stage presence when you walk on stage can destroy you. If you walk up there all scared, right, people will notice that and they'll never follow you. But to me, it's a lot more simple and pure when it comes to acting there's so many more elements because there's a camera involved there's crews involved there's casting directors there's you understand like you're working with another person so you need to learn how to interact properly with someone else in their character and you understand so it's like there's there's so much more to it so i started off not taking any acting classes and i did okay um but my my acting career has changed dramatically since i took the class yeah yeah Yeah, I i took one i took my first class like what is it a vagabond or something i took i don't know i took like my for just on screen whatever just yeah. because you know people ask me I like to do sketch or things like that and i i've done a few things like i did something and then i did uh a short thing we did and then i was actually with actual other actors actors yeah. who were serious about it and i was like fuck i felt <laughs> i felt like out of place like when my butt my comic friends i was chopping up but i was like i felt out of place so um i took it but it's not like you know that's it. My main thing is the, the podcast and stand up. Because yeah, if you do too, like you can't, you can't get good, good at one thing if you try to try to do too much at once. So that's like everything for me is like, yeah, the stand up, the podcast, and that's, uh, and that's it. Um, is there any stuff you uh, come up that you want to plug? Any uh, movie? Is there anything? Because this will this will come out like in a week or two here. Yeah. Oh, uh, there's a few things. Um, yeah. Well, the the seventy one seconds is a big one. It's um. Like I said, I I play the George Zimmerman character in a short film about the the murder of Trayvon Martin. Um, that'll be coming out in May, and at the same time, another film called um, The Devil's or sorry, Dead Man's Hand will be coming out, which is just a, a a thriller. I mean, it's like you know everyone everyone's sitting there playing poker, and if you lose, you die. Ah, um, okay. and it's it's great, it's fun. Um, that's coming out in May also. Um. And then I'll be filming another film for Patrick Lives On, which I want to talk about a little bit, yeah. which is um, a non-for-profit that I work with that um, we raise money to help um, after-school programs, fund after-school programs, mm-hmm. and fund children to get into after-school programs. So that's kind of our way of, you know, fighting against the violence here in Chicago that, you know, they talk about in the news so yeah. much, the gun violence. And we feel like the best way to do that is to get people active and doing, doing after-school stuff, programs. Keep it busy. Yeah, and and... and so that's what we we do, and and so we have our our uh, film festival coming up um, in February. That um, a lot of local filmmakers from the Chicago area, you know, submit their short films, and then all the money that from that goes to the organization. So that's coming up. That's a big thing, and I I think I'm gonna have a film in in that one. Um, I believe if they submit it, I'm not okay. in charge of it, but yeah. And then the the 
the the seventy one seconds that was a Trayvon one. Yeah. One. So what if it, was it like the whole story, just a short part? So of it's it seventy one seconds. So it's 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 the the well it's, I I don't know the the lead up because I wasn't there for that. I just okay. played George Zimmerman. So okay. I believe that there is some backstory to it. Uh, some dialogue between uh, Trayvon and his father and mother and stuff. Um, and then it shows the moment where I call the police or George I should say calls uh-huh. the police to the moment that you know Trayvon is murdered so oh okay so everything that's, that's yeah. the 71 seconds yeah. right there there right there 71 seconds from the beginning of the phone call to his death to his death wow and then um any social media you want to plug or anything else you want to plug and I'll put it no. and I'll message you and I get all this stuff and I'll put yeah, it up yeah no I mean I'm just pretty basic I'm uh I'm on Facebook that's all I do Facebook at you know JP McAllister no TikTok. And, oh, and and I have a website, of course, www.jpmcallister.com. You can find my resume on there, my acting reel, uh, credits, and all that stuff is on there. Okay, cool, cool. Well, uh, and, anything else you want to plug or anything? If not, no, we're good. All right, Thanks I think. Do I have anything? Oh yeah, my what the hell's mine? Uh, mine is mine is just all the same. It's Lobo ninety one ten because when I was in eighth grade i got aol <laughs> and i put in lobo and it's like we're already taken and i put another thing in and it's like already taken and uh and it suggested lobo 9110 and i've been using it since that wherever. works yeah it, it so lobo 9110 inter, uh with an instagram not snapchat i mean i have a snapchat but usually i just use that to try to get laid i understand and then facebook is the same lobo 9110 joe yeah. and the lobo dan podcast ig twitter i think that do i have anything coming up one month are we no i don't think so I'm going to Florida for two weeks for work. So. That's what's up. Yeah. <sighs> for golf. All right. Uh, <laughs> Logan, thank you for having me on, dude. I mean, uh, thanks for being on. Yeah. I'm an idiot. Thank you. Right. Logan, then. Logan, then.